Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. You found it. It's Nation, Window Cleaning Resources, best podcast done by me on the internet. Um, <laughs> thanks for checking us out. If you're new to the show, welcome first and foremost. I'm Jersey. Have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck too much. And you go back and watch some previous episodes. We are on episode number 50, meaning we are two away from one year of episodes. So pretty cool. I'm glad you guys are here with me for that. If you are part of the nation, you are one of the cool kids, one of the people who watches every week, thumbs up, likes, subscribes, and does all the cliche stuff. What is going on? Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's because of you I get to do the show, so I definitely appreciate it. And if you are one of the elites, one of my favorite people, you are somebody who watches every episode, likes, thumbs up, comments, listens to every episode, whatever, however you watch or listen, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, Window Cleaning Resource, and I'm your rep, and you call me up, and you text me, and you do whatever, and say, hey, put this order in for me. It is because of you that I get to enjoy not being homeless. So thank you for that. I Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to be one of the elite, um, somebody who orders through me, my number is 862-312-2026. And really, that is my cell phone. You can even text it. You can call me. You can ask questions. You can put orders in. You can say, hey, I just put everything in my cart and I want you to put it in for me. I love those ones. They're super awesome. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. I just can't say thank you enough, and uh, very, very genuine when I say that. This is available on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Tuned In. Uh, it's also available on YouTube. However you want to watch or listen, please do it, and make sure that you love it. Either way, um, before I get in to who won this week, I have a announcement, if you will, but we are going to give away two tickets to the huge convention right now here's how you win all you do is you share this show you share it on youtube share it on any of the forums on uh, itunes you can share that on any of the forums uh groups international window cleaning pages business pages anywhere and everywhere every time you share it is one entry in for the winning we're going to draw next week at this time so please share this out everywhere and anywhere you're going to be entered in and i'm going to contact you if you win like i said two tickets to the huge convention this uh august coming up it's going to be awesome and epic and each ticket is yours for the use Please come. Make sure that you're going to make it. Uh, I'd love to see you there. I'll give you a free high five. But anyway, so share out the content. But the winner from last week, who is winning a $50 credit and a uh, swag bag from Window Cleaning Resource is Dan Diekman. What's up, man? Dan, you won. All you need to do is go ahead, shoot me your info via email, josh at window cleaning resource, and you are the winner winner. So shout outs this week. I have a ton, and I didn't put them all down there, so I apologize. All you guys who just text me every week and just be like, what's up? I love the show. Here's where I'm from. Or ask questions. Or like I said, those guys that put the orders in. Truly, truly thank you. But this week's shout-outs, I've got to give it up to Nick Camp. He is the Aussie who is everywhere, been posting. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it up, man. I appreciate you checking us out and land down under. That was awful. That was probably super offensive. I apologize, but either way, thank you for checking it out. Uh, Chris Tom, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Scott, um, with IWCA, Scott, Scott Aaron Kranz is a good dude, and I'm excited to meet you. I've talked to you a bunch of times. I just love that you're posting everything, and uh, I love that you're commenting too. That means the world. I love it. Um, What up, Scott? And the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Brian. Uh, every time I say your last name, I know I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, Divorcets? Divorcets? What up, man? I, Whatever. You know. You know who you are, man. What's going on? Uh, he's another one. Just always genuine. Uh, I love hearing from him. So, What's going on to all you guys? Uh, again, thank you for everybody who contacts me, orders from me, and all that stuff. So, What going on? Um... I touched a little on the convention, and I want to talk a little bit more about it. 
I know. I upset some guy uh, two weeks. I forget your name now, Andrew, maybe. He said I talked too long, but I got to talk about it. Listen, we're getting geared up. We talk about it every single day on our end because of everything that's going on and the tickets and the uh, booth space and the, the area layouts and everything. So it is in my brain and I'm super, super excited. It is the huge convention. It is coming up in August, which seems so far away, but it is going to be June next week from when I'm recording this. So it's coming up. If you haven't been to a convention or you're listening to this late, get on it. They are literally amazing. Go to any of them. Go to all of them. The best one, in my opinion, is the huge convention. Um, It just is amazing. It's huge. It's awesome. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, It is August 23rd and 24th. It's going to be at the Atlanta uh, Marriott Marquis in Georgia. That's the Atlanta location. It is easy to fly into. It's going to be awesome. There are uh, get-togethers and meetings. There is a um, software summit before. There's the entire show with the speakers and the just knowledge, the networking, the like parties, the just everything. It's amazing. It's a nice way to kind of uh, let your hair down, kind of get a vacation, but learn a crap ton of stuff. So if you haven't done one, do it. They're awesome. Um, go to it. You're going to love it. Um, and win tickets. Like I said, share this episode on YouTube, Facebook, Put it wherever you want, uh, share it, and uh, you're in. So this week, we're going to be talking about something that continues to come up with people, and it is probably one of the like hardest things for people to kind of wrap their brains around, especially when you're new. I would have never, ever, 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 ever thought of doing this when I was new. Um, it's just is really, really hard to do, but it's firing a customer, Okay. Firing a customer sounds so much harder than it is, but here is the truth of the matter. Now, a dollar is worth a dollar, right? It's worth a dollar, and it's always worth a dollar. You have two dollars, they're both worth the same. How you earned those dollars, that's the part that's tricky, right? If you have a dollar you work so much harder for because this customer is a pita, a pain in the ass, and you work super hard to earn that dollar, and you spent twice as long as you should have, and there's just nothing you can do to make that person happy. They're just a huge thorn in your side. They are not making business life happy or fun or anything. And you're spending so much more time to earn that dollar than why have them. And this is what we're talking about, firing a customer. Now there's all types of customers and all the facets of business, but it all kind of comes down to the same premise. I'm gonna give you guys a couple stories. One of my uh, friends that I know in the industry, a uh, very, very good friend, he had a problem with a gutter. So when he did the entire house of gutters, which again, I've told you guys, I hate gutters. So gutters suck in general. But one run of the gutters, it was so close up to the property line next to him, an older style house, they had to put the ladder on and it went in the neighbor's yard a little bit. Done it for years, no big deal. The last time they went there, the homeowner, where their ladder was in, came out and got all angry. Which doesn't make much sense, hey, I'm in there. But whatever, his property, he wants to do whatever. So he just said, I can't do it to the homeowner. Now, the homeowner came back and said, that's not, I can't do that. You got to do it. It's now leaking on that side, blah, 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 blah. You got to go up there and do that. Well, there's no way I can do the gutter. Well, you got to get up there and do that. You got to climb the roof. You have to, it's too steep. I can't climb the roof. You got to put it in there. You're going to have to go next door, ask him, beg him, let him put the, 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 the ladder in there. And then the guy will give you this little strip of dead grass. And that's where you can put it in. Not conducive to gutter cleaning at all. And the person was giving a big, big stink. Now, when you can't rectify a situation, you say, hey, I cannot do this work safely. I can't, my employees can't do it safely. I can't do it efficiently. I can't charge you what I'm supposed to charge you. It's going to take me three times as long to do that. I just can't do that. And they keep, keep, keep insisting they are going to be continually persistent. And when you do the rest of the job, you can do the rest of the job completely perfect. They still may be angry at that part. If that gets to the point and they say it's unacceptable, you have to do it. Then that's the part where you say, hey, you know, I genuinely apologize, but I don't think I'm the company for you. It's just not something that we can do. And I know you're not going to be happy. And I want you to be happy. And it would drive me crazy knowing that you're not happy. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just back out of the situation. 
And uh, we're going to wish you the best of luck finding a different company. But there are probably a company out there that may be able to find a way to do this. Different than what I do. And hopefully you fall in love with them too. Getting rid of a customer who is going to continually be a thorn is uplifting. It is just a weight off of your shoulders. And now you shouldn't go around firing all of your customers. Because that doesn't make sense. right? But the problematic ones. And you know. Take a second right now and think about all your customers. You know which ones suck. You know which ones are horrible. You know which ones you don't want to have, but yet you do have. Why? Why do you have them? Right? If you're brand new in business, this is what people do. When they get into business, they want to do everything. I pick up dog poop. I clean house showers. I, I do all this stuff because they gotta. They just need income. You know, As that you know, boulder is being pushed... It becomes easier and easier. And you have more liberties to let the customers go. And this is what we're really talking about. It's just getting to that point. Now, if you have five customers a week, it's going to be dang hard for you to go ahead and leave one of those customers by the wayside. And now you're only down to four. That's going to be really, really hard. But when you are up and running, right, like you may be right now, this may be the busiest year you've ever had which is awesome. High five for you. If it is, let me know. I'd love to hear that always. But if it's your biggest year ever, then what are you doing? Why are you struggling for this one customer when you could be making a bunch of money with all the other customers? And there's customers. We all have them. You walk in, you even talk to them on the phone. Hey, I'll be there. Great. I'm not going to be there. I'll leave the back door open. Just go ahead and leave it. Boom. Done it. It's great. How does it look? Looks great. Checks on the table. Done. Those are the customers that I love. Those are the ones that make my job easy. They make me in and out super fast. And that dollar, that same dollar that's worth a dollar was so much easier for me to make. What if you could surround yourself in all day, every day with customers like that? It would be epic. It would be epic. You'd be happy. You'd love everything you do in every day. Maybe. I'd still hate gutters. I'd still hate gutters. And uh, I still would hate like prickers and stuff. But I would love my customers a lot better. Now, I had a customer, this is years ago, but this is on a route side of things. And this particular customer I knew for a very long time, and I knew when I went in, they said, hey, I, uh, I'm i a little bit picky. I know what I want. I got to have it that way, blah, 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 blah. I was new. I said, absolutely. We love picky customers because I know that I can make you happy. We've done them for years. Well, eventually, eventually he's going, hey, this window, which they had the kind of uh, large frames where they're like four inch by four inch sets. We'd wipe everything down and they were old. They were stained. They, you know, in the one corner was a lot of uh, uh, issues with the uh, silicone uh, sealant that kind of was leaking. It was always like that, always. But he started to kind of be angry at the situation and I would bring it up and I would let them know. And and uh, every single time we would do the job, we would come back and uh, they would call us, hey, these windows are still bad. I'd show back up. I'd say, you got the seal in the corner. Is that what you're talking about? It's on the frame. You know, I tried razoring some of it, you know, and it got, no, 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 that's not it. This window was dirty. I look, I can't find anything. He goes, oh, well. I don't know what to tell you, but we saw it. We called you back. This happened probably three or four times. Every time I go back, is it the stain in the corner of the frame? No, no, no. It was in, it's in the window. I said, I can't see any. I go deep, you know, just dry buff the whole thing. I go on the inside and I look and he called me probably three or four times to come back for absolutely nothing. We couldn't find anything. We couldn't, we couldn't find a mark, a smear or anything. We knew he was picky. So we were very careful right up the front. Nothing. So I eventually said to him, I said, hey, um, I apologize, uh, but I hate getting callbacks. Uh, You know, that means I'm not doing my job properly and I feel like I'm letting you down. So what we're going to do from here, we're going to go our separate ways. Uh, Again, I apologize for, um, you know, not being able to perform to where you are. I know you're picky and I know you'll be able to find somebody who is, you know, up to a, a different par. Now, I know our quality. I was the one that went back on the callbacks probably two or three of the four or five times. And there was nothing, 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 nothing. You're wasting my time, man. 
I'm sorry, but listen, when I got to send a crew back to a job on a route where I only made money because that route job was on a route and nothing. Now, if I got to go back because something happened, right? Even if there's a big, a bird strike or something like if it's the day of or the day after, it doesn't drive me that crazy because it's like, okay, let's just make them happy. Right. But when it happens five weeks in a row and there's nothing there, not once. I understand that there's a problem. Okay, so now if I got to go and do the job, now road jobs are relatively quick. Sending a crew there twice with the time and drive, it's doubling the time of this job. I'm losing money at this point. And I know it's not going to get any better. So at that point, you have to kind of let people go. It, it is what it is, and it happens. Route jobs are unfortunate because I like to build routes. The tighter a route, the more properties you have on that route, the more money you make. Everybody knows. So I always hate getting rid of route, but I also know when there are succubuses, people who just want to take your time and waste your money. You're going to earn that dollar that's worth a dollar easily, or you're going to deal with the pain in the ass side of things to get it. And it's completely up to you. Now, there's a couple ways to kind of get out of that. Now, as you can see, my, my process is the, the friendly way. I apologize. I've done nothing wrong, and I know it's not me. I know it's them, but I'm going to apologize and I'm going to take it on and I'm going to take the, the blame for it. Why? Because if you take the blame for something or you put it on yourself, then they don't have the opportunity to do it. It's already been done, right? Like my crooked nose, okay? If I bring it up, then nobody else can be like, ah, I got a crooked nose. They'd be like, yeah, I already said that, you know? But it's like little kids when they get made fun of for something that people think that nobody's realized, that's when they get made fun of. But if you go out there and go, yeah, so... I'm heavy set. What are you going to do? Nobody makes fun of you for being fat, right? Same thing. If you put it on you, then you're, no, no, no. It's, 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 it's not your fault. You know, I just appreciate you handling this all the way. You know, I, well, I apologize and blah, 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 blah. So there it is. First and foremost, when you put it on yourself and take the blame, that's one way to ease it. You're not telling them, hey, you're a pain in the ass or, hey, I don't want to do work for you because you suck. You're wasting my money. You're wasting my time and you're pissing me off. I don't say that, but I put it on myself. Because if you do that, it's already been said. They don't need to go and do it somewhere else. I've never received a bad review for that. It's just something that has to happen at times. Now, if you do that and they say, oh my gosh, no, no, no. You know what? It's not you. It's, it's, I apologize. You know, it's, it's been tough with this and uh, you, you guys do a great job. I, forget I said anything. I've had that happen twice that I can think of prepping for the show twice. I've stuck with those people and it's changed the relationship 100%. 180, completely better, and they never said anything after that. They maybe just realized, hey, I'm being a little difficult, something like that. But there are people who just will always be difficult. The other side of things, when you get into a job, if you raise prices, that is another one. I say, hey, um, I've gotten out of uh, jobs and firing customers where I said, Hey, I apologize. You know, with the uh, last few times we've done your project, we have just been way, way under bid. We're going to have to increase your price uh, due to the time it takes in your project. Uh, so uh, we are going to have to charge you double what we did last time. And before we go, I want to let you know, I always tell them after that job for the next time so they have all that time. I say, um, I understand. You know, look around for somebody who can do it better than that. Um, I apologize that our prices have changed. Um, I price them out. Now, that's another way to do it and just it's letting them know the time. They know how long you've been there. They know the time, but it upsets them. So now they're going to find somebody else, but it gets you kind of out of that. It allows them to make the decision. I can still do you. Absolutely. But it's going to be twice as much. Well, no, I'm not going to have that. Oh, you're not going to. Okay. Well, I apologize. They've made the decision at that point. So another way to do it. But residential is a little bit easier. Now, there's construction cleanups, things like that, where you may get into a job or I've done it too, where I've gotten into brand new jobs. I've done a bid and there's been trash bags on the window and just horrible, you know, a mess that it looks like they haven't painted in 30 years, much less that they would clean the windows, but once every 16 years, I'm going to overprice that. I'm going to price it so that I don't get it because I understand that that job is going to take me a lot, lot longer. And I understand that it's not a repeat customer. Now I'm not going to do that on everyone. I'm not telling you to go out and do that, but I'm telling you that if you can see the inkling, the longer you do this, the more you'll find when people are becoming issues or where they will be issues is to price yourself out of that. Now, the big thing with that is they're going to get multiple quotes. If you give them a price, 
It's too high, which we all have, even genuinely given them a price where they thought was too high, is they're going to find somebody else. The crappy part, <laughs> the crappy part is where you try to price yourself out. You go, this is absorbent price, and they go, okay. You're like, oh, crap. Well, now I have to do it, you know. Um, but you don't have to take on everybody. You don't have to take every job, and you don't have to keep every job. Letting go of people is sometimes best. Now, the forums are great for this, and the Facebook groups. There's just posts just like two days before I'm recording this on there that uh, was talking about this. And the same thing, just a pain in the butt. We call those PETA pain in the, yeah, uh, PETA customers who there's nothing you can do to please them. There's just nothing you can do to please them. It's such a hard, it's such a drain. You have enough to worry about. It's time to let them go. So something to think about. But residentially, it's harder because you're talking to somebody about their castle. You can't uh, you can't say certain things and, uh, and it's a little bit more of a delicate thing, but you are there every three months, four months, six months, whatever it is. You're not there every week. Now with commercial, this is a harder one. I personally never dropped a commercial account that I can think of commercial, meaning less than once a month or usually larger projects. Um, Less frequent than once a month, month, I should say. So the larger projects usually have commas in there. And uh, usually you're dealing with property managers and the property managers are good. Uh, there's also, for the most part, a lot of uh, multi-locations. So those are harder. I'm going to deal with that dollar or that pain in the butt a little bit stronger because I know the money is making it worth it for me. Now, I had one. Uh, the guy ended up not making it very long, but he was there for maybe two years um, that we did it, and he was a pain, a pain, pain, pain in the butt. He talked to us like we were dirt bags. Uh, he was just rude, and um, he would say stuff like "deal with it," you know, be like, "Oh well, there was a couple, you know, windows up there that the uh, screens weren't taken down, but whatever, you deal with it." Oh, okay. Well, we don't, you know, but it was a large project, so I took a little bit more of a a, a whooping on it verbally than I would have if it was just a smaller job. So that's completely up to you and your discretion. But that guy didn't make it very long because he was horrible to everybody. They ended up letting him go. Um, but keep that in mind also. The other version or the other way that you have a customer you want to let go is because they don't pay you on time. If a customer is notoriously late, notorious, listen, I had, and I've talked about just a couple weeks ago, I plowed when in Wisconsin. I plowed in the winters because it's Wisconsin, right? Uh, it snows there every now and then. And um, I had a customer. It was a large complex of eight buildings, sidewalks, uh, uh, lots, salt, every two inches. It was huge, huge account. It was so awful getting money from them that I eventually had to go up and up and up and up and up. And then we just, after a few years of dealing with this, our last snow check we were getting in June snow check in june all just arguing with them for no rhyme or reason they just were not well put together and uh they would complain they'd say two inches we go there and do it at two inches they'd say that's too often go to, or you know too much do it every three inches we go there every three inches say hey, you're not out there soon enough there just was no making them happy eventually i had to bite the bullet on that one and it just was not worth waiting months and months and months of me calling every single day or every other day writing letters finding the right i spent so much time of my own draining personal time tracking these people down that it just wasn't worth it so i ended up having to let them go also and that was a hard one that was a hard one now we ended it at the end of a season so i had to wait the whole season until i took the hit for not having the work but man i took a hit that was one of those that i it was worth it. I stayed with it longer than I should have because it was the money. But not having that is huge for my sanity. And I'm telling you, sanity in business is worth so much more if you can make an easier dollar. And I always say that. Now, this is not the sales side of me. This is just something that I say. I love water fed, right? If I could pick a job and do only outside water feeds on casement crank out windows, that's what I would do. That would be my company. I would create a company just doing that because it's so easy. It's so fun because there's nothing in your way right it's like uh commercial route work where you don't ever have to talk to anybody if you don't want you, you just do your work you know there's nothing in your way 
having simplicity is huge. There's so many of us out there that have businesses that we're the HR person and the marketer and the graphics person and the salesman or woman and the uh, even the laborer, right? The uh, accountants, we're all of that. There's so many stresses on us. Why not remove some of them? Now, when you're ready to do that, definitely, definitely think about doing that. I'm not telling you go out there and drop a bunch of people and uh, I apologize for my phone, but uh, don't go out there and drop everybody because that doesn't make sense either. But if you have somebody that's holding you up, look at look at letting them go, right? Um, in residential, there's more of a pain in the butt because people think that it's their castle. So residential people, you're going to get a lot more. Just keep an eye out for it. And if you have an awesome story about having to fire somebody, I would love to hear it. I'd love you to put it in the notes. If you're on YouTube right now, go ahead and put that in the notes. If you're listening uh, just on the podcast, uh, I know you're going to go out there and share this podcast, which is awesome. Um, but when you do in a Facebook group, share your story. I'd, I'd love to hear it. I, I, I really do genuinely love hearing other people's stories. I love getting people set up for business too and watching them grow. With that being said, if you do want to buy any of your solutions or uh, products or tools or getting into water fed or getting whatever, pressure washing, anything, please let me know. Let me be your sales rep. I'd love that. 862-312-2026. Genuinely my cell phone number. Go ahead and text me on that and uh, we'll go back and forth. Just text me. What's up, man? Watch the show. Love it. And I'd love to give you a shout out. That would be awesome also. Now, I did this before and you guys turned out in droves. So this week, the discount code, if you put an order in through me, 5% off discount code this week is going to be cool kids. If you put an order in through me and you say, Hey, I want to put an order in, I want to put in a cool kids order or something like that. Shoot me a text with that and uh, you'll get 5% off. Don't share that. Don't tell people you're the one listening to the show to the end. You're the one getting the discount, so definitely let me do that. Big or little, I love to put the orders and let me know. Anyway, enough of the sales spiel. Please make it to the huge convention. That is awesome. I'm going to be there. The creators are going to be there. Uh, we're going to be there just hanging out and uh, showing products, demoing, doing classes. It's my favorite time of year, so try to make it. Again, go to thehugeconvention.com. Check it out. And I hope you're there, and I hope you share this, and I hope you win tickets so you get free tickets to go. And then all you got to do is show up. Atlanta's easy to get to, right? But go do that. And until next week, go out there and be epic and uh, make a billion dollars. <laughs>